should be home with the children. That's not, that's not the way it should be. Don't tell me that a, a more important about your family. No, I need to work eight hours a week so I can elevate myself in society. Mm -hmm. No, if you go that way, you're going against what God says. We need to raise our children yes, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. See, that seems strange to the world. And that's what I'm saying today. You know, in 1 John 5, verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? He that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son. Amen. We have to be able to overcome this world. So this is what I want to talk about today. Heaven on earth. Right. People think they're going to find heaven here on earth. The Ohio player said, heaven must be like this. It must be like this. But it's not like this. You can't find heaven. If you're looking for heaven on this earth, you're going to be in a rude awakening. Yeah. Everybody's waiting for this thing. This earth is so great. There's no heaven. As soon as that COVID-19 hits you, you're going to know there's no heaven on earth. Yes. As soon as the earthquake comes, You'll realize there's no heaven on earth. Yes. Oh, there's going to be some hurricanes. We're in South Florida. Yes. We know all about the hurricanes, brother. We, it seems like we go from A to Z every year. Used to just go from A maybe to D. Or, but now we're going all the way to the end of the alphabet, brother. You know, when that tornadoes come, we realize there's no heaven on earth. And when our children go astray, you put so much in them, and you try to teach them and raise them, and they go astray, you realize there's no heaven on earth. And when we, we see these mass shootings everywhere, you see mass shootings, it's like everybody wants to be a copycat. Somebody kills somebody and somebody else has to kill more. You find out there's no heaven on earth. And when somebody put their foot on your neck, you realize there's no heaven on earth. So I want you to know today, the only place we can be saved is in Jesus Christ. And the heaven we're looking for is a lot further than here, brothers. It's gotta be a lot further than here. Because as soon as you realize that everything that good is not gold, you'll realize, realize there's no heaven on earth. Oh, it all looks appealing. You ever went out to something and it looked so great, but once you got it, Brother Walker, you found out it wasn't all that we cut out to be. There's no heaven on earth. Everything that glitters is not gold. You know who found this out? The man in Luke 12, verse 19. He says, and I will say to my soul, soul, thou have much goods laid up many years. Take that ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. That all sounds great, right? Yeah, right? You know, we work to retire so we can eat, drink, and be merry. And you get old, you find out there's no heaven on earth. Yeah. He said, but God said unto him, thy fool, this night 
thy soul shall be required to thee. Not next week, not five years from now, this very night, thy soul is going to be required of thee. And who shall these things be which thou have provided? All the stuff you're working for, all the stuff you're piling up, you can't take it with you. Somebody's going to get it. And you're wasting all this time, and you think heaven is on earth, but then you're going to find out everything you have, or you're going to leave. Oh, it's, it's, it's crazy for people to think that there's heaven on earth. Brother Wait, in Luke 16 and verse 23, Luke 16, 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, uh -huh. being in torment, right. and seeing Abraham afar off, uh -huh. and Lazarus in his bosom. Right. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And seeing Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. He thought that heaven was on earth. He had all these um, uh, all these riches, and he wouldn't even help Lazarus. He would step over Lazarus yeah. to go into the gate. The man was laid at his gate. And a rich man would just step over and wouldn't even give him the crowns off his table. But I'm going to tell you, heaven's not on earth. Because as soon as he died, he found out. <laughs> it's not about this earth. It's about where we're trying to get to. In Luke 18, verse 22. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, like, Yet like a thou one thing, sell all thou have and distribute to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. He went away sorrowful because he had much money. Very, very rich. You know, he's not going to give up that money. People aren't going to give up their riches. They think that heaven is on this earth. But you find out everything that glitters is not gold. Oh, you got to put your trust in God. You got to put your trust in Jesus. Oh, it's easy to get caught up into this world. It's like putting your money in a bag with a hole in it. Who in their right mind will put a money Put their money in a bag with a hole in it. Brother William, Haggai. Haggai 1 6. What does he say there? You have so much uh -huh. and bring me a little. Right. You eat, but you have not enough. Right. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. Right. You clothe you, but there is no water. You, you eat, but you're not full. Mm -hmm. You drink, but your thirst is not quenched. Uh -huh. You're cold, but you're still, you're still cold. Mm -hmm. What does he say, brother? And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to be put into a bag with hope. If you think heaven is on earth, you're mm -hmm. earning money to put in a bag with a hole in it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you today, we need to dedicate our life to, toward God. We need to dedicate our life toward heaven. That's the only way we're going to make it. This, this world is in terrible shape. And it's not getting better. It's getting worse. And I'm trying to tell you, people are concentrating on things. And they think, well, because I drive a nice car and I live in a nice, a nice home, why would I want to leave here? Well, you're going to leave here whether you want to or not. And you're going to find this world is not heaven. And everything that glitters is not gold. And uh, Proverbs 23, verse 5, Brother Louise. Proverbs 23, 5. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For mm -hmm. riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You ever seen that? Your money just seemed to fly away. <laughs> yep, yep. How can your money, Brother James, have wings? But that's what it seems like. Soon as you get a little money saved up, it's, it's inevitable that there's always something that pops up. Yes. And that money, you have to spend it on something else. Yes. And I'm trying to tell you, you can't rely on the money. You can't rely on things in this earth because this is a heaven. Yes, and you're worried about a couple of dollars. It's just not going to work. Let me tell you where you should lay up your treasure. In Matthew 6, 19, lay up your treasures Lay up not your treasure upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt yeah. and where thieves break in and steal. There's always somebody trying to steal from you. Yes. They, they called me the other day on the phone and they said, is, is this Jerome Jackson? Now, who answered? Who started off a conversation like that? I said, how can I help? They hung up the phone. No, no, know what they wanted me to say. They wanted me to say yes. Once they get my voice saying yes, 
then they can use my voice for anyway. It's always somebody trying to get in your pocket and trying to do your harm and trying to take away your financial means. You can't even go on the computer without people trying to hack you. I'm trying to tell you, don't lay up your treasures down here. Because moth and rust and thieves break in to steal. But lay up your treasures in heaven where neither rock, moth, nor rust does corrupt you, but where thieves do not break in and steal. You know why? Because it's in heaven. You know, Brother Nelson said, you put your treasures where you want to live. Yeah. If you want to live in heaven, that's where you left your treasures. If you want to live on earth, that's where you leave your treasures. But lay up your treasures where you plan on being. All right. And it's this world, this world's in bad shape. And Mark, Brother Lewis, Mark 10 and verse 25. Mark 10, 25. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle uh -huh. than a, for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You know why that, that, that rich man trying to take that riches through the needle, through the eye of the needle with it? <laughs> you can't take the treasures to heaven. You know, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. We all gonna have to pass away. We can't, we're gonna leave everything that's here. And people think you work your whole life for what glitters, but everything that glitters is not gold. But not only that, heaven is not on earth because old age is coming. Right. And if you don't know that, you just keep old living. Yeah. When you get up out the bed, you move a little slower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your hearing goes. Your eyesight goes. You walk in the room and say, now why did I know I came in here son? <laughs> old age is coming. So you think this is heaven on earth? You think earth is going to be great? You just keep living and that old age hits you. You're going to realize it's not all that it cracked up to be. Amen. Oh, no, it's not. This is what uh, Jesus told Peter. He said in, in 21, John 21, 18, Truly I say unto you, that when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch up your, your hand and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. <laughs> you think this is heaven on earth? You keep living, you're going to find out it's not heaven on earth. Brother Daniel's always talking about his knees. <laughs> we all have our little problems. You know, we, 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 we become incontinent. Not me, but I'm just saying people. <laughs> You know, we have all these problems. And you know, now we're talking about uh, 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 cognitive. You know, I don't know if you're looking at the news now, but everybody's talking about whether you're cognitive or yeah, not. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all of these issues that come with old age, blood pressure, yeah. and cholesterol, and arthritis. You know, some people call it rheumatism. <laughs> loneliness. Did you realize that it's a thing called loneliness? Yes. Oh, I know we're young now. We move around. We have people in our life. But when you get older, you get to be by yourself. It's lonely. Mm -hmm. And you think this is heaven on earth? Oh, oh, there's other things in this world that bothers us. It's like uh, our bone density. You know, we used to be able to hit the ground and bounce right up. Yes, now you hit the ground, brother, when you roll over. <laughs> put your on a knee and hopefully you can get up and hope nobody have seen you. Man. <laughs> brother Tom, oh, amen. Uh, we also have uh, 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 pain, pain. Where, where, where does all these aches and pains come from? It's a pain in your arm and it leaves the arm and jump to your leg. And all these pains come. Old age is coming. And you think this is heaven on earth? I'm trying to tell you, you better look toward heaven. That's where we're trying to make it to. We're trying to make it to heaven. And the Bible is clear. In Ecclesiastes, brother, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. Let's get an idea, when we listen to Brother Williams, how old age will affect us. In Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1, what does he say, brother? Remember now thy creator in the days of thy evil. Right. While the evil days come not. Okay, now, the old days and the aches and pains are called the evil days. Mm -hmm. They're coming, brother. Yes, you just keep waking up every morning. They're coming. What else, brother? Nor the years draw not. Uh-huh. Now, you know when the years draw now, because it seems like I just had a birthday two weeks ago. And here it comes again. You know, before when we were young, we couldn't wait to be old. And I can't wait to get out of this house. I can't wait. Now we can't. We wish we could go back, Brother Walter. Those years come real fast now. And they always want to celebrate your birthday. No, I don't want to celebrate it. Right, keep going, brother. Thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in it. Uh-huh. 
while the sun or the light or the moon uh -huh. or the stars be not dark. Okay, now light and the moon and the stars are bright now. But one of these days, I don't know if that's mental acuity, but one of these days, it's not going to be so bright. Yes, what else, brother? Nor the clouds return after the rain. Now, usually after the rain, there's sunshine. Uh -huh. But when you get all this rain, they rain every day in your life. All oh, All right, keep going. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, uh -huh. and the strong men shall bow themselves, uh -huh. and, and the grinders cease, because they are people. Now, what are your grinders? If you smile, you, you'll see what your grinders are. And I doubt that many of us still have all 32 of them. We might have 32, but they're not all ours. All right, keep going. And those that look out of windows be dark. Now, you know what you need to look out the windows now? You need your mind does. You need, this. You need this to look out the window. Yes, sir. All right. And the doors shall be shut in the street. Uh huh. And the sound of the grinding is low. What'd you say? <laughs> huh? I didn't hear you. You said the. Did you say sound? The sound of the grinding is low. Right. Fix it. Fix it. And he shall rise up at the voice of a bird. I used to be able to sleep through anything. Now, if I get the least little bit of noise, uh, I'm up. My wife just keep on sleeping, but I, I, I can hear every little thing. All right, what else? And all the daughters of, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Uh -huh. Also, yeah. they shall be afraid of that which is high. Don't go up on a ladder. Amen. I'm telling you, you get old, you stay off of a ladder. Amen. Somebody said, well, you, you know, who's cleaning the gutters? No, I don't need to be up cleaning the gutters. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to be all clean to the gutter. All right, go ahead. And fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish. What does the almond tree do? So how does it blossom? It's white. You know what happened to your hair? It gets white. Good. But we're talking about a person who's experiencing old age, and you think it's heaven on earth, because you now you're living in a strong body, and you're running, and you look magnificent, and you but you just keep waking up. You're going to realize heaven is not on this earth. I don't care what the Ohio player says. Heaven is not on this earth. What else, brother? And the grasshopper shall be a bird, mm -hmm. and desire shall fail. You know, you, you, you older people, you keep living, that desire will fail. Mm -hmm. What else? Because man goeth to his long home, All right. uh -huh. and the mourners go about the streets. I'm trying to tell you there is no heaven on earth. And if you feel that way now, and you don't think you need to be amenable to God, and you don't think you need to give God any of your time, and you think you're just going to live forever, and you think the way I have it is now is great, why would I want to go to heaven? All right. You just keep waking up. And you're going to wish you had remembered the Creator in the days of your years. And one more thing I want you to know about heaven on earth. There's some storms coming. Yes. It's coming in your life. It's coming in your life. Yeah. It's coming in all of our lives. We call Al Roker the weatherman up and we'll say, Al Roker, what's going on? He's going to say there's some storms that's coming in our lives. Mm -hmm. That's the way God planned it. That's where ever since they took a bite of that fruit in the garden, there's been trouble ever since. And it's come down to all of us. That's why he said in Mark 4, verse 37, there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat upon the ship and so that it was not full. Jesus was in the ship, but there's still storms. It's not going to, just because you're a Christian doesn't stop the storm, but it's good to have Jesus in the ship. You know, that's what he said in Jonah 1 4. Jonah tried to run away from God. Who in your right mind think you can run away from God? Because wherever you, wherever you turn to, there he is. And in Jonah 1, 1 verse 4, the Lord hurled a great wind on the sea. And there was a great storm on the sea, and the ship was about to break up. You know who put that storm in the way? God did. Uh -huh. There's storms in all of our lives. Yes, it is. There's going to be death in our lives. There's going to be tragedies in our lives. There's going to be hurt and pain in our lives. And that goes to show you that there's not heaven on earth. There's no heaven on earth. We're trying to make it to heaven. And James 1, 2, Brother Williams. James 1, 2. James tell me to count it all. What? Count it all. Joy when I go through these things. 
in James 1, 2, what does he say that, brother? My brother, uh -huh. count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Why should I do that? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works with patience. And you go through this and works patience. Mm -hmm. You ever been short patient? Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to, you get in the line at McDonald's and they take it too long. Uh, you want to go for that thing like that. But we need to learn patience. Mm -hmm. And the trying of our faith teaches us patience. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize we want this pandemic going. I know I do. But God is teaching us patience. Yes. God is teaching us to rely on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we, can, we can look at the doctors and we can expect things and we hope things happen. But in the final a roundup of human affairs, we can only believe in God. Amen. And if he wants it to go on further, that's the way it's going to be. But we have to learn what, need, to learn what we need to learn while we're going through it. Amen. We learn patience, how to love one another. Mm -hmm. You know, this should bring us closer. Yes. Going through this thing should bring us close. We should be able to call one another. I know we rely on seeing one another, and I brought the gloves so you can put the gloves on so I can shake your hand. Uh -huh. But I still miss that closeness that we have, right. and we can still call one another. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to tell you, God is in charge, yes, and we need to just be patient. Learn whatever, whatever, whatever the trials and tribulations are, is having this effect because that's what God wants. Right. I don't know what God's plan is. He doesn't have to tell me. We just need to know that we can trust in him. Yeah. In Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sins of mine and doeth them, I would liken him to them a wise man who built his house upon a rock and the, and the rains descend. It didn't say the rains might descend. It didn't say maybe one day the rains will descend. It said the rains descend. And the floods came. And the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock. Rains and floods and winds are coming. Right. And if you think this is heaven on earth, you're going to be in this for a sharp surprise, a big surprise. Because it's going to be some storms in this place. Yes, We've already into the hurricane season now. Hopefully we don't get too many this year. But they're coming. And for us to rely on this world and put our trust in this world, that's the height of folly. Yes. In uh, John 16, verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in, that in me you may have peace. In, in the world you have tribulation. Now, Jesus said in this world you're going to have some tribulation. There's going to be some trials and tribulation. Jesus is telling you that. Jesus is not a liar. You, you go on your job, everything's fine, and there's a, there's a problem. Yes, sir. You go home and everything's fine, there's a problem. You go to your school, there's always a problem every day somewhere. Who are you going to trust? you got to trust in Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you there's no, I'm trying to give you the key. Yes. I want you to have the key yes. so you can have everlasting life yes. with God. The key is that there's no heaven on yes. earth. You have to do something. You to, if you want to go to heaven, we got to do what it takes to get to heaven. And <clears throat> Job 14 and verse 1 A man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Amen, amen and amen and amen. amen. I guess I'm the only one in here who can say amen. amen. But you know, one day you're looking in the mirror, you look all nice and good looking, and the next day you're going to look in the mirror, you got bags under your eyes. Your hair is falling out. Your hair is great. You got to use something to make your hair black. <laughs> what I'm saying is, a man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And you think it's heaven on earth? And Genesis 3.17. Genesis 3.17. What does he say? And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Uh-huh and has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Mm -hmm. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Curse is the ground. Don't you know, it, it seems like, I, 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 can't, I can't talk for your yard, but it seems like I just can't get rid of those weeds out of my yard, brother Walker. Mm -hmm. right. I, I dig it all up, Me too. put down all new fresh grass, and a few weeks, there's more weeds out there. <laughs> Curse is the ground, and you're going to work by the sweat of your brow, and thorns and thistles shall it bring. It's not going to be parity, it's not going to be equality in this world. We're trying to make it to heaven. Amen. That's where it's going to be. That's where true love is, true parity is in heaven. 
You think this place is gonna, it's not. Brother Ray, in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 816, what does he say that, brother? Who fed thee in the wilderness with men? Uh-huh. Which thy fathers do not. Right. That he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, to do thee good at thy land. You know what, we, we're in the wilderness now, mm -hmm. and we're being tested. God is testing us now through this pandemic. Yes, sir. Eventually, you got to come out the house. Yes. You can't stay in the house forever. Right. And you're going to eventually have to just trust God. Yes. Either, either, either way it goes, you still have to trust God. I know, I know we have anxieties, and I know we're going through, and I understand that. But eventually, you just got to trust God. Right. You got to put your trust in God. Yes, either way it goes, God takes care of you. And he said that they were going through a testing ground. That's why he took them in the wilderness, so he may prove them and humble them and test them. Amen. We just got to trust God. Amen. Sometimes it seems like you want to get back at people who do you wrong. Trust God. Amen. It seems like you just think that somebody ought to be treating you the way you need to be treated. But you know, we treated Jesus the same way. We didn't treat him right. Amen. We need to just learn to trust God. Amen. Oh, I know it's a hard thing to do, but it's something we're going to have to do right. And in Matthew 4, 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 4, 2, brother. Matthew 4, 2, what does he say there? When we had fasted 40 days and uh -huh. 40 nights, right. he was afterward and hungry. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, yes, command that these stones be made great. Just like the children of Israel was in the wilderness and they were tempted, Jesus Christ was in the wilderness. And he was tempted. Amen. But Jesus Christ overcame it. Yes. We can overcome this. Yes. We don't let this congregation die because something happens. We just have to keep finding the best way we can to put our mask on and our gloves on and, and try to be nice to people. Up. Oh, no, no, I don't. No, just be nice. Be the best we can. Yes. To learn to get along and we'll overcome this thing. Amen. Respect people. Some people, you know, they just they want their space. You give them their space. Yes. But you still need to realize we got to trust God. Yeah. Jesus Christ went in the wilderness, and he passed his. And in 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be off in the time of my departures at hand. Let me tell you what Paul said. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. And not to me only, but to all of them that love and appearing. You are going to have to fight. Amen. We're going to have to go through some things. We get the reward after we finish fighting. Amen. You don't do anything, just sit down and think you're going to get a crown of life. The crown of life is for those who have fought, for those who have finished, and those who have kept the faith. Yes, you can't do that just sitting at home on the, in the recliner. We got to really fight because there's some storms in this life. The storm, stormy days are coming. Let me show you. This is where we're trying to get to. This is the true heaven. It says in Revelation 21, verse 4, God shall wipe away all their tears. You know what? We're going to be his children. He's going to be our God. What makes heaven heaven is that God is there. Yes, That's what makes heaven heaven because yes. we're going to be there with God. Yes. And he's going to wipe away all our tears. Yes. You think this is heaven on earth? You think earth is heaven? It says, and there shall be no more death. Can't you wait on? Aren't you going to be glad for that day? No more death. I, I got all these obituaries, and I'm, I need to just talk, tear them up and throw them away. All the funerals I went to, I don't think anybody's going to more funerals than Brother Thomas. <laughs> Brother Thomas got so many. Everybody knows Brother Thomas. Yes, sir. And don't you know, no more death. That's going to be a wonderful day. Yeah. Neither sorrow. You don't know how much sorrow can be in people's lives. Sorrow can really affect people. Their personality, their disposition. Goes on to say, neither shall there be any more pain. Pain is something that you get older, you're going to realize you're going to have it. You can take ibuprofen, Advil, you can take whatever you want. But it's only going to minimize it so much. And it says, uh, for the former days shall have passed away. You don't want to substitute this place for the real heaven. And I want you to know today there's no heaven on earth. The only place we're trying to get to is where God is. And in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, and it's not this place because in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, what does he say there, Brother William? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven uh -huh. with a shout, 
with the voice of the, the archangel and with the trump of God. Now, one of these days, we're going to be somewhere, and you're going to hear a shout, you're going to hear the trump of God, and the sky is going to roll back. Yes. Wherever you are, even if you're in the grave, guess what? You come up. Get up. I don't care wherever you are, the sky is going to roll back, and Christ is going to be coming on the cloud yes. with his angels. And what's going to happen, brother? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh-huh. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud. You don't have to worry about those who died in Christ. They're getting up first. Man. And we who are in Christ, we're going to all be caught up. We're going to be caught up together. It's not going to be here on earth. Right. We're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds. I'm looking forward to that day. Man. And I'm telling you, you can't find heaven on earth. Man. There's no heaven here. No. You keep on living, you'll find out. No. There's so many injustices and, and there's so many things that's going on in this world, but just keep trusting in God. Amen. Vengeance is mine, say the Lord. Amen. He will repay. Yes. We get all mad and we want to try to straighten. I'm going to straighten this out. No, you go sit your mind down Amen. and be quiet because you don't want to lose your soul Amen. trying to straighten something out. God can straighten it out. Amen. What verse are you in there, brother? Verse 17. Okay. To meet the Lord in the air. Right. And so ever. So shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the way it's going to be, brother. Yeah. That's going to be a wonderful day. It's not heaven on this earth because everything is good. Ain't. 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 I wouldn't want to say that all day. Everything that glitters ain't gold. All is going, brother. Old age is coming. You young kids, you just chat you just keep on living. All you young kids, y'all keep on living. Oh, right now, the world's great. There's no problem. But you keep living. That old age is going to get to you, brother. And you can't be, you're going, to, you're going to wish you, they were patient with you, so you need to be patient with older people now. That's right. That's right. And in, there's no heaven on this earth because storms are coming. Ever since they took a bite of that fruit, there's been some storms in this world. And I'm not just talking about literal storms, I'm talking about spiritual storms and all these things that are going on in our life. There's some turbulent times coming. So there is no heaven. So who are you going to trust? What if, what if Jesus told you in John 5, 24, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me shall have everlasting life. Would you trust you? Yeah. And what if Jesus told you in John 8, 24, that you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he? Would, would you believe Jesus? Yeah. And what if Jesus told you in Luke 13, 3, I tell you, may except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Oh, I believe Jesus is telling me the truth. And what if Jesus told you in Matthew 10, 32, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess my father before, with, before my father which is in heaven. Oh, Jesus is not a liar. And what if Jesus told you in Mark 16, 16, he that believed and is baptized shall be saved. Would you trust Jesus? Or would you trust the person saying, you don't need to be baptized. Just come on down the front and say this prayer and you'll be okay. Amen. And when you stand in front of the Lord, he's going to say, what did I say? Amen. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. I'm telling you, we're going to have to stand up against this. Stuff. Oh, we love everybody. We don't want to be mean, but we got to tell you the truth. Amen. The last thing we want you to do is stand in front of Jesus on the last day and you think you've been okay because some man said a prayer over you. Oh, Lord, please help us. Do the very best we can to help people realize there's no heaven on this earth. Oh, this, this, this earth is not heaven. Oh, there's going to be some problems. If you don't know that, you just keep living. You keep on going, you'll find out there's going to be some problems. Maybe there's someone here today that want to walk down this aisle and give me their hand and give Christ your heart. And say, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Brother Jackson. I found out there's no heaven on earth. Brother Jackson, I tried to drink all the alcohol I could, and I found out there's still no heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brother Jackson, I, I had all the drugs I could use, and I found out there's no heaven on earth. Oh, Brother Jackson, I put my trust in this woman or this man, and I found out the only person I can trust is God. Amen. Maybe you want to walk down the aisle and give me your hand and give Christ your heart. And say, say, God, I found out. I found out through all the experiments that, that in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the, uh, uh, the preacher found out that you can have all the things you want in this world that's still a problem. The, 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 the water rolls out, the water rolls back in. They seem like day runs in the day, but every day there's still problems. 
All the things you, you think you can want to see and all the things you think you want to have and you go and obtain those things and you find out there's still problems. No matter what you do, you still going to have problems without Jesus Christ. Amen. But you want to know today, you want to be a Christian and add it to the body of Christ. The church that you can read about in the Bible. Amen. Somebody said, well, what difference does it make? Because we're going to be just really. And John 12, 48. John 12, I'm going to tell you why you need to read what you need to see in the Bible and do what it says in the Bible, because there's a reason for that. Right. And John 12, 48, what does he say, brother? He that rejected me and received not my word mm -hmm. as one that judges me. The word that I have spoken. This is what's going to judge you. Yes, sir. If it's not in there, you can't be right. Amen. Oh, then you, he's already telling you that the word that I spoke was going to judge you. Amen. And you're going to say, well, what, what, what God, I thought. Who cares what you think? Amen. Well, God, my opinion. Who cares about your, he's telling you this all you need to know. Amen. Don't stand in front of God. And you're standing on something that's not in the Bible. It won't work. Amen. The word that I have spoken, the same. Amen. shall judge you in the last day. Amen. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Care enough for your soul to find out what the preacher is preaching you, if it's right or wrong. Yeah. Take your Bible with you. Mark it up. Highlight it. Wrinkle some pages. Do whatever you need to do to get this into here. Amen. You know, I think we take the Bible out on Sunday morning only, and we blow the dust off, and we come in like, oh, yeah. And we haven't, we haven't read the Bible all week. Did you read the Bible at all this week? Sir. Did you open it at all? Because now, you know, since we're not here on Wednesday night and we're not doing our Bible classes, you know, we're going to find out whether or not you really love the Lord. Right. This is what we need to stay strong. Man. We're still the church of Christ at Washington Park. Man. You have to be here for people. And if you're a Christian, you're not living right, you need to repent of that. that no better time than to repent of it is now. You know, the prodigal came home and, and the father saw him coming afar off and the father... He said, I, I, I just want to let you know, Father, I sinned, and I'm, no, I'm not even worthy to be called your child no more. And the father told the boy, you just be quiet. Man. I'm half living. <laughs> you just be quiet. You come and put some shoes on my son's feet. Put a ring on my son's hand. Put a, put a robe on my son's back. Because my son that was dead is now alive again. Oh, God will take you back. Yes, sir. He wants you back. Amen. But you got to take the first step. If you take one step, you'll take the next. Amen. I'm trying to tell you that there's no heaven on earth. So let that be known as together we stand and sing the song. 573.